Hello there my very good friends, on today's wrestling news, did Cody Rhodes just retire on AEW Dynamite? It looks like the former Ruby Riot is heading to AEW. AEW have unveiled a four-man commentary team for Rampage. And overnight the announcement of the sad passing of Bobby Eaton. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. Right, we're going to kick things off with the biggest story coming out of, yeah, not as newsworthy episode of Dynamite as the recent few weeks, but we got this big thing at the end. Malachi Black, I mean, he pretty much squashed Cody, right? It was like five minutes. It was very one-sided for much of it. Shades of the Brody Lee match with Cody last year, mm. for sure. Ended up putting him away after putting him through a table uh, on the outside, kicking him off the top rope. Cody went through the timekeepers. Uh, put him away with the spinning roundhouse kick, the black mass, as you might know it. Uh, no word on what it's going to be called now. Boot on the chest. Very cocky, Mr. Malachi Black. Very cocky indeed, Thomas End. But Cody... Uh, <laughs> Tony Schiavone came in afterwards. This led to Cody kind of cutting a promo. Very emotional promo, kind of mm. putting over AEW, what they'd done, what they'd accomplished, like the company's success, kind of building up the fans. And then he appeared to retire from, from wrestling. This unforeseen turn of events. He, uh, he like thanked everyone for how they'd supported him and everything else. It was all very ominous. And then he started taking his boots off so that he could leave them in the ring, symbolically. Now. He uh, got one of the boots off, but uh, Malachi Black came back with a crutch and beat him up because he's evil. Uh, kind of held the, the boot, looked at it a bit, and then the show went off the air. But as the show was going off the air, the announcers were speculating on whether or not Malachi Black had retired Cody Rhodes. So it's pro wrestling, right? Retirements <laughs> aren't retirements in pro wrestling. We always go back to the Terry Funk rule and the amount of times he came back from retirements and everything else. Um, so, you know, you, it's very difficult to look at these things and go, oh yeah, Cody is definitely stepping away from the ring. He is finished forever. Um, it's probably part of an angle and everything else. But still a surprising turn of events to close homecoming, Adam. Yeah, it was surreal, obviously, when you saw how much time was left on Dynamite when he got that cocky pin. You're like, well, what happens now? you got like five minutes to kill, lads. And yeah, yeah, he made the announcement. It's always a bit awkward, like you say, because you don't want to believe all retirements in wrestling. But then again, if it is actually a retirement, you don't want to be like, ah, he ain't retiring. And then they go, no, he has. And you go, oh, bollocks. Um, although The Undertaker hasn't retired, so I, don't, I can completely hypocrite with that. But it... it <laughs> I don't know, is he going off to film some stuff? I sense that this attack with Malachi Black may well lead to a match where Black says, you don't get to retire, I say when you retire, and maybe they run it back at All Out, perhaps? Yeah, I could see that happening for sure. I, it seems to me like Cody maybe wants to take some time off, mm -hmm. like, like you say. Um, it was an interesting segment. I'll save my subjective opinion on that segment for my article on the website, Ups and Downs. I do the article for that. Check it out in a few hours' time. Um... But yeah, it's probably setting up a hiatus and then a comeback. Uh, Black looked great coming out of all of this, though. Like, the match was really well suited to to make him look like as mm, big a star yeah. as possible with the new entrance and everything. Oh. Uh, yeah, man. Just really good stuff uh, for, for Malachi Black coming out of this show. And we'll see what comes of this Cody angle. And it makes sense, to be fair, with Cody. He obviously is doing a great job backstage. And this roster is ridiculously big now, especially with the yeah. presumed arrivals of the likes of Daniel Bryan and CM Punk and maybe even Bray Wyatt down the line. It, it, I love Cody, but they don't need him on TV right now. So it makes sense that he maybe just goes into a more backstage role or goes off to film, I don't know, another Go Big show or do whatever. Or just go home and be at home with his wife and kid. It makes a, yeah. makes a lot of sense. But let's continue the conversation with AEW because there could be another new arrival. The former Ruby Riot is apparently set to become All Elite. This comes from Fightful Select. No crap, just sat. Sean Ross sat <laughs> of Fightful Select. Uh, revealing that now called Ruby Soho, she could be uh, announced as AEW bound very, very soon. It's generally believed that her no compete clause uh, runs out just before uh, AEW's All Out event, which go down on September the 5th. She's an 11 year veteran. She is phenomenally talented. She was seriously underutilized, in my opinion, in WWE. I think she'd be a great addition to this female roster, Andy. It's a no brainer of a signing yeah. for me, this. It really is. Um, She's phenomenally talented. I don't think we got to see that a lot in WWE because she wasn't necessarily booked in situations like long singles programs and everything else with big matches uh, that would allow her to showcase that. But she was also universally beloved by her peers as well. So it, it's just a complete no-brainer signing across the board. Um, 
I think it's like the, the non-compete is like maybe like five days before All Out. Mm -hmm. And All Out's in Chicago. She's from Chicago. Uh, yeah. They're doing a woman's Casino Royale on that show. They've announced that already. There's your Joker, right? In your hometown. Perfect. Perfect way to set it up. Um, yeah, man. I, I think this is just the easiest signing they could make in the world. Oh, look. There's a free agent who probably wants to come here and can benefit us. Pluck. Yes, in you come. It's a good idea. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And I'm looking forward to seeing her in a place where maybe she'll have the opportunity to have more big matches and everything else as well. Yeah, it makes complete um, sense. And the women's division is just growing rapidly now. And now you've got Red Velvet versus Britt Baker uh, on, I think, the first Rampage uh, next Friday for the right. women's world title. Uh, Layla Hirsch winning that number one contender for the NWA Women's Championship last night. It's exciting times after the division has sort of struggled initially. Yeah, yeah, I, the, the, there are definitely seeds there. Um, mm -hmm. And there are valid points to make about like how things are going at the moment with certain characters and exposure levels and opportunities and everything else. Um, but when you add another person like Ruby Soho to the equation, you've got another yeah. like really solid, strong veteran there to help some of the more less experienced people on the roster mm -hmm. come up and everything else. So Indeed. yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing this. It's a good signing. It's a good signing. Anyway, <laughs> Rampage, that debuts, like you said, next week, the 13th. That's, um, my maths are correct. Yes, it is next week. <laughs> uh, and AEW announced the full commentary team for that show. Four men in Ooh. the announced booth, which is, that's a lot of people. Uh, we already knew Mark Henry was going to be involved. He was uh, pinpointed as an analyst for the show shortly after debuting at Double or Nothing. The other people, as announced on last night's Dynamite, are Excalibur. Of course Excalibur. He's the lead yeah. play-by-play guy, you know. Uh, network show, you put Excalibur on it. Taz who has excellent Ooh. banter with, with uh, Excalibur on yeah. uh, Dark, of course. And uh, the fourth man is Chris Jericho, who has been a regular guest in the Dynamite announce booth. He's been in and out of it constantly. Whenever they need someone to come in and do a guest spot, they usually get Jericho. So four people in there. Uh, very in I, I'm a two-man booth guy, really. I, I prefer mm -hmm. that kind of kind of not, uh, like uh, level of chemistry and everything else. But uh, you know, four men in the announce booth. There's going to be a lot of voices there. We'll have <laughs> to see how it goes. We'll have to see how it goes. But if it's good, it's good, and good means good. And you are good there. Good. good. <laughs> yes, four commentators, Jeremy. Uh, I'm surprised by the amount of people they've announced, but I do think that that dynamic may well work. Like you got, like you say, you got Excalibur, the play-by-play -play guy, Taz, who's you know, used to working with him, Mark Henry, who's been brought in, and Chris Jericho is just a brilliant sort of wild card to be thrown in there to add his two pen in. I wish it was MJF. I enjoyed him calling uh, Aubrey Edwards a floozy and Tony Schiavone an old fart on commentary last yeah. night. But I'm sure Chris Jericho, as he has done in the past, will do an excellent job, and I cannot wait for Rampage. Next Friday, it's really snuck up on us, hasn't it, Andy? Yeah, it really has. And then the week after that, you know what happens. You know what happens. Oh, be still my beating heart. All right, let's conclude with some uh, very sad news that we woke up to this morning. Former professional wrestling legend, beautiful Bobby Eaton, uh, has passed away at the age of 62 years old. His sister, uh, Debbie Eaton Lewis, confirmed the sad news on Facebook. Cause of death not being revealed. Of course, he is known as one half of the, one of the most legendary tag teams of all time. The tag team definers probably you could say the Midnight Express he teamed with uh, Dennis Condry of course teamed with Stan Lane they had epic matches and feuds with the Rock and Roll Express the Fantastics I could go on and on but um, you just look at uh, wrestling Twitter this morning Andy and you know all you need to know about what a lovely bloke and a legend that Bobby Eaton was yeah only 62 years old as well it's really sad it's really sad it's like you, when you listen to his peers and like people like Stone Cold Steve Austin and everyone else talk about this guy, you understand like how much Bobby Eaton meant to like a certain period in pro wrestling and everything else. You can understand it by watching it, of course. Um, but I always think it's interesting to hear like the colleagues of of like legendary wrestlers talk about like how good they really were in the ring and everything else. And Bobby Bobby Eaton was an impeccable worker in pro yeah. wrestling best known for his tag work of course with the midnight express but he had little singles runs here and there he was wcw television champion for a while yeah. he was in the dangerous alliance uh, later in his career he worked in places like new japan um didn't actually retire from the ring until 2015 as well so he went on and on <laughs> yeah. and on for a while um but yeah man like th this sucks like i'm a big jim crockett promotions guy uh like that like 85 onwards era love revisiting that stuff on the network it's some of my favorite uh, wrestling ever and uh, the Midnight Express were a huge part of that. The Jim Cornette's introduction, Loverboy yeah. Dennis and Beautiful Bobby the Midnight. It's just, they're one of the all-time greats. Sad, horrible thing to wake up to. Fox, obviously, go out yeah. to the family. 
and friends, Bob Eaton, and uh, yeah, sad day, man. Rest in peace. Exactly. Right, let's move on to your Twitter questions at What Culture WWE, of course. If you want to get in touch with us, Cheeky Boy 1021 says hello. Uh, with Andrade and Ric Flair leaving WWE, do you see the possibility of Charlotte leaving the company as well down the road? Um, Charlotte strikes me as a WWE lifer. Uh, yeah. Like, obviously, we don't know about like how she might be influenced by things behind the scenes and everything else. But WWE loves her. She seems to love working there. Uh, obviously, there was the report that Rick had uh, spoken out about, you know, created frustrations at her booking, but he's denied that himself. So, mm -hmm. Lord knows what the truth is in that matter. Um, but I don't think so. I think uh, WWE. She's one of those people that WWE would really push the boat out to keep if there was talk of her leaving. Now, if when her contracts come up, I think she will probably go, "Hey, I'm going to talk to this company and this company because you yeah. drive your value up. She values herself, uh, and she should." Uh, she's a key player in that division, but I think she'll be in WWE for a long time yet. Yeah, I've got to agree with you on that one. As much as Andrade and, and Ric Flair may well say that the, the grass is greener over here, I think WWE will throw the green at her as much as they need yeah. to to, get, to stick around in WWE. Uh, Backward Bloom 80 on Twitter gives us our second question of the day, uh, saying, I can see AEW using the storyline of CM Punk being straight edge to stop Hangman from drinking, sober up, and then rise up to defeat Omega. The Elite have poked fun at his drinking. What do you think, Andy? It, it, it's something that AEW has definitely used as something like that heels can say, hey, that's getting in the way of your success and everything else. And, you know, part part of it is like his anxiety is the anxious millennial cowboy. It's like, it's a really good character tick. Um, as far as getting Punk involved, I'm not sure they'll go down that route. Um, doesn't seem like something that they would use to to kind of introduce Punk with. I think they'll take a more straightforward approach with him uh, and maybe mingle him up with Darby Allen, who did the best in the world line last week. So, hey, look, I do think it makes sense, however. Yeah. Obviously, Punk's straight edge. That's how he got over, like, big part of how he got over. It's not the sole reason, obviously. And hey, why not? Why not bring in uh, Doc Gallows and Serena <laughs> Deeb as well? Bring back the society, man. Let's go. What was Doc Gallows wearing last night, by the way? Uh, he's a very sexy man, isn't Ooh. he? Doc Dangles Gallows. <laughs> Yeah, interesting to see where they go next with this uh, Hangman Page angle. He just got the crap kicked out of him by the Elite last night. But there is a long road to recovery for him. And Christian Cage looks like he's the new number one contender. No announcement as to where it's going to go now. But we could get Christian Cage versus Kenny Omega at All Out. Nice. Who knows? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And we'll finish uh, with a question from Eddie Zamhari, who says, since the Olympics is going on, which wrestler do you want to compete in it? And which Ooh. sport would it be? Eddie suggests brilliantly. I'd love to see this. Darby Allen in diving. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. Uh, well, I'm going to go to the, the you know, I'm going to go to the aquatic arts. Mm -hmm. Swimming. Who do you think is the best swimmer in all of pro wrestling? You could look at athletic prowess. You could look at people's uh -huh. builds. You could look at maybe things they've done in other sports. Maybe people have a swimming background. But none of that matters when you've got a guy in this sport who's called Bobby Fish, does it? <laughs> there you go. There Brilliant. you go. That's my pick. Uh, all right, I'll pick... Hmm, I was going to pick Lance Archer to just throw people far, but I don't think that's a sport. You generally have to have <laughs> objects, and he'd just be not asked if it was a shot Person or a discus tossing. or yeah. something. Uh, Damien Priest, archery. Oh, no, I'll tell you what. It's right there, Andy. One of my best friends, Anthony Agogo, boxing. He won Boom, a medal already. It's an open bloody goal. Go on, Anthony. A fantastic performance from him at London 2012. And great work from Team GB at the moment. Go Team GB. Uh, and let's finish up with today's and finally some great signs that we saw in the crowd on Dynamite last night. Back in Daly's place, there was a Simon Miller sign. But I want to give a nod to Silanas. I do apologise if I butchered your Twitter handle there. Who brought a Sidgwick mega fan sign to <laughs> AEW Dynamite. It did also say, Andy, and the rest, I guess. So we can include ourselves in that. <laughs> but I'll just say it's a good job Sidgwick's off this week because he would not be able to get his head in the office because it's yeah. so big after that. Great to see. Thank you so much for everyone who takes signs to these shows for us. Yeah, I mean, when I when I first saw the sign, my initial reaction was, oh, God, don't don't hype Sidgwick's ego up even more. But when I saw <laughs> and the rest, I guess, I was like, oh, fair enough. That, that's really funny. Yeah, love stuff like this, man. Great to see. I can't wait to see it. I wish I could be in Centre Parks now with him going, you seen this? Seen this, love? And she's like, yes, Michael. <laughs> Can we go on a bike ride now? Yeah, Sidgwick Metafan. She's not the only one as well. Brilliant. Uh, but yes, thank you once again to Silenas. 
I hope I've got that right for taking those signs. And for everyone who took signs, Miller signs, of course, uh, often spotted out there as well. But let us know your thoughts on that and all of today's news stories in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. Myself and Michael Hanfler reviewing AEW Dynamite and all the bonkers stuff that went down on it a little bit later on. Plus, let us know your thoughts and Twitter questions on Twitter at What Culture WWE. Watch there, follow both of us. You can follow Andy Murray at... You can follow me at Andy H. Murray, and it doesn't begin with H, but I can't really say anything other than rest in peace to beautiful Bobby Eaton. Exactly. Uh, thoughts, of course, go out to his friends and family. Awful news to wake up to. Follow me on Twitter at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at WhatCultureWWE. But for now, thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you soon.